Bonjour à tous, bienvenue dans All In Gaming, votre émission e-sport. Au programme de cet épisode 10 des Data, nous allons voir un focus sur G2 eSports, une interview exclusive avec Farhan Ahmed, Strategic Partnership Manager de chez Twitch, et enfin les événements Nice Cactus de la semaine. On commence par les data, 32% des femmes fans d'e-sport sont originaires de Corée du Sud, 34,7 millions de dollars de cash price gagnés dans l'histoire de Team Liquid, et enfin 9 millions d'heures streamées sur Twitch sur le jeu Fortnite. G2 eSports créée en 2014 est l'une des structures les plus puissantes au monde. Elle dispose d'équipes sur pratiquement tous les jeux majeurs et a remporté de nombreux trophées sur chacun d'entre eux. En termes de fans, G2 fait aussi partie des plus grosses organisations du globe. Le patron de G2 eSports n'est autre qu'un ancien joueur professionnel de League of Legends, Carlos Rodriguez. Il a fondé Gamers2 qui est rapidement devenu G2 en 2015. Sur LoL, l'équipe G2 a rapidement fait parler d'elle. Elle a remporté en 2016 le championnat d'Europe. En 2020, G2 a désormais remporté pas moins de 7 titres de champion d'Europe à égalité avec Fnatic. La même année, ils ont failli réussir un quadruplé unique et jusqu'alors jamais réalisé même par une équipe coréenne ou chinoise, à savoir le Grand Chelem. Malheureusement, ils échouent en finale des championnats du monde contre FPX. Sur CSGO, le parcours a été moins flamboyant mais l'équipe a toujours évolué au plus haut niveau, remportant l'ESL Pro League et la Dreamhack Master Malmo 2017. Malgré son côté moins médiatique sur Rainbow Six, G2 a remporté un titre de champion du monde en 2019. Je reçois aujourd'hui Farhan Ahmed, Strategic Partnership Manager de Twitch, que nous aurons le plaisir de revoir à nouveau dans un futur épisode de All In Gaming. Uh, the way I look at, at, at Twitch is, 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 is Twitch is, firstly, it's a live streaming service um, where millions of people come together every day uh, to create entertainment through live and interactive content. Um, so we have um, uh, 1.5 million viewers on our service um, at any given time. Um, and in 2019, we had uh, 10 billion hours watched. Uh, of content on Twitch, so um, there's a significant audience, and and the, the way I would look at it is is that you know people come to Twitch to to share passions, um, and communities are formed through that, um, and then the content experience is, is is very unique to our service. So it's really all around kind of live interaction, um, and that's through the content itself and also the relationship between the content creator and the viewer. So a significant part of content on Twitch is, is the audience and Twitch chat, we call it, um, and the interactions that chat have with the creator um, as well as each other, actually create a new type of entertainment and um, uh, it, it's in of itself a, a, a really kind of exciting and, and interesting way to consume content. So I guess in answer to your question, like um, historically, these communities have formed through gaming and through esports, um, but Twitch, uh, it, it's much bigger than that now. And we have communities growing outside of gaming and um, non-gaming content has um, comprises around 12 to 15% of content on our service. And, and as long as it um, uh, kind of adopts the live interactive model, Um, that we have on our service, then it has, you know, a good chance of succeeding and uh, of finding a community. Um... Sure. Um, I mean, esports e kind of competitive gaming um, has has been around perhaps for longer than than than, than you may think. Certainly, really, even in the 90s. Um, there were the, the, the start of, of what you could call kind of competitive gaming and, and esports tournaments. And um, esports is, is really kind of at, at the heart and the kind of the cornerstone of a lot of the content on our service. It, it typically is the, the pieces of content that is most viewed um, as a standalone piece of content because it brings together some of the best competitive gamers in the world playing against each other. Um, they have kind of personalities and communities and teams behind them. And then that experience of watching the very best compete 
um, you know, if you even you can understand it if you have a sports background, you know, you want to be watching the best kind of playing against each other. That's where the exciting moments um, uh, uh, come from. And then, you know, as it's built out, we see more evolutions in, in, in the games that become more exciting and more built for viewership um, uh, and also to kind of encourage competitive edge. Um, and I think I think nowadays what's really exciting about esports is it is becoming far more uh, mainstream perhaps or certainly kind of more in the it, people are far more aware of it now than perhaps they were say five five years ago um and we're seeing more kind of non-endemic brands come and activate within esports and and how they do that i think is an open question I, I, and i think that's something to kind of consider you know there's huge opportunity this is where the youth are this is you know young people young engaged audiences who are watching content for a long period of time um uh, it's an audience that's likely, you know, if, if, if you have a sports organization or brand that you want to be a part of that conversation. So there's significant opportunity there. Um, and then how you activate that, that that's a, a very kind of an interesting, um, an interesting question. But, you know, gaming, esports and Twitch, um, you know, a, a very harmonious relationship, I think. You know, gaming is so deep rooted in our culture, um, in how we speak, in the products that we that we bring out, and in the creators and the community that we have. Um, and I, I, I can't see, you know, I, that will always really be the heartbeat of our service. So, um, uh, for those looking to kind of um, move into gaming and esports, Twitch is really the perfect home for that. Les tournois Nice Cactus de la semaine, ce sera sur Counter-Strike le samedi et le dimanche, Nice Cactus Summer Qualifier, top 2 qualifié pour la grande finale sur Valorant. C'est la fin de cet épisode, merci de l'avoir suivi et on se dit à la semaine prochaine pour un nouveau All-In Gaming.